And so today we're going to, courtesy of TVO at Seamus Stokes' recommendation, we're going to see the SS Great Britain. The narrator on this show, Rob Bell, uncovers the story behind what was once the longest passenger ship in the world, the SS Great Britain. This vast vessel included innovations still found on almost all modern ships. And I will repeat this afterwards, but there is a series that TVO offers. And if you do a search on TVO Greatest Ship Series, you will find 12 other episodes or maybe 11 other episodes on the greatest ships. And Elspeth reminded me that this Saturday night on TVO, and I think it's eight o'clock, they are going to be exploring Endeavor. So you can get it on TV, but you can get it online as well. So with that, I'd like to welcome Ron Jenkins and Sherry Wilson. I mean, Sherry Wilson and Sherry Wolfson um, to, uh, to our event here today. And Graham, if you would put the video up now, I would thank you. Jim, go ahead. How, when she ran aground that for a time off Ireland, how was she refloated? Hmm. That's a good question. I didn't catch that in the in the video. Did anybody else? I don't think they explained it. Okay. Okay, so we don't know, Jim. Sorry. You'll have to do some research on that and come back and tell us. Okay, next up is George, go ahead. Um, I visited the Great Britain when I was in graduate school. I lived in Bath, just down the road. And Did so you? I was there a few times. And since I was taking history of technology uh, and Brunel was big in the history of technology, I got to love the ship. In fact, I have the book on how to build a model of it. It's a thick book on how to build a model of that ship. I also have this, the book on restoring uh, the uh, Great Britain and uh, the, the rules for passengers in 1861. So I can do some research for you as well. That would be terrific, you know, if you did a little uh, write up on it, George, and then I could send it out to everybody. That yeah, I haven't visited it for uh, <laughs> since 1976. So um, it's gone a long way from the Hulk that I knew when I was there. Wow, I, you know, it's interesting. I was over in England, um, Oh, three or four years ago, I can't remember the exact date. And we were in Bristol, but I never saw the ship. And I, having just seen this, I wish I had known about it to go and take a look. Um, okay. Jim? Uh, yeah, Jim, go ahead. For size, the modern aircraft carrier is over a thousand feet long, just as a comparison. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next, go ahead, Gord. Gord, I'll yes. you. Yep. Okay. Um, I had made a note of the uh, topic for today, SS Great Britain. Uh, however, my brain was on the SS United States. <laughs> which doesn't matter. I mean, I love, uh, I love the old engineering and so on. So uh, it was a fascinating project or fascinating uh, presentation. Um, I wonder if there's a similar video on the SS United States, because that was about a about hundred years later and it set a lot of technological uh, new standards as well. That's a good question. I don't know if it's part of the series because I, didn't actually look to see which boats were in the series, 
but you might take a look at it, Gord, and if you find it and think it's really good, then we'll put it up for the rest of the folks. I'll let you know, I think it's uh, been restored uh, sometime in the past 40 years okay. or whatever. Thank um, you. Okay. Okay, thanks. Uh, George, go ahead. Um, I just remember I have a, a 20 by 30 poster of a cross or a longitudinal section of the uh, Great Britain. So uh, next fall, maybe I could display it at one of our meetings. Especially if we're together in person, that would That's be- That's what I mean, when we're back together. In person, yes. Yeah. That for instance, here, here's here's the brochure for uh, Melbourne and and uh, Brisbane. Wow. So I've got, got quite a a lot of stuff here for the Great Great Britain. Thank you, thank you, George. Seamus. <laughs> yeah, we can hear you now. No, we can't hear you. You've turned your mute on again. Can you hear me now? Yep. Okay, my apologies. I was absolutely fascinated, uh, uh, particularly when uh, I think about uh, Brunel. I forget how to pronounce his first name, but what a fascinating guy in terms of engineering, both on land and in sea. And many of his... Um, principles and marvels uh, still exist with us today. And uh, I, I found it very emotional to see on the video there, the, the hull sailing back, I think, uh, on the river under one of uh, Brunel's uh, marvelous creations, the, the railway line spanning the river, the bridge that he built. So uh, I feel personally that uh, we owe a great uh, vote of thanks to Mr. Brunel. And I was not aware that uh, he was the genius behind the modern propeller. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Uh, thank you next up is Patrick. Go ahead, Patrick. You're muted, Patrick. Yeah. I, re I remember the day in um, 1970. I think it was a Saturday, and we I watched her on TV coming up the Severn River and under the bridge, and going back into the actual dock that Brunel built that dock for her before he built the ship. It was absolutely fascinating. And then I went to see her a few weeks later and they had produced a, um, a booklet. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Um, and I just had a quick look at it and it says when she was in Dun Dun Dundrum Bay, Oh, in Ireland. In Ireland. They had, a, they had a group of, I don't know if you can see this, uh, there. That's a group of Irish navvies, hundreds of them, digging a, a trench in the sand at low water so that when the high water comes up, they will hope. I don't know if they got her off that way, but I imagine that, that, that's how they did it. Thank you, Patrick. That's fascinating. Yeah. Okay, next is George, go ahead. Um, well, Patrick's uh, explanation reminds me of the evergreen that's uh, uh, on the bottom in Chesapeake Bay. And that's exactly what they're trying to do, dredge uh, a channel to refloat her on a high tide and get her off the, the bottom and out of Chesapeake Bay. At least she's not, uh, uh, stopping traffic like her sister in uh, the Suez last year. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but she's uh, been there a, a lot longer. Um, here here's the the model of uh, the SS Great Britain as as completed uh, following the book. Um, what I wanted to say was that. Uh, uh, Mark Isambard, uh, or sorry, Isambard Kingdom Brunel uh, came about his abilities uh, genetically. Uh, his father was uh, uh, even 
more famous in the time. Um, he uh, was the, the person who uh, allowed uh, Britain to win the uh, Napoleonic Wars. Uh, he had developed a system for uh, making pulley blocks for ships in the US. He migrated from France to the US and he tried to sell the idea of these automated machines to the US Navy who were not interested. Uh, so he went and sold the idea to the British. And uh, just as today where uh, our automobile manufacturers are sh shackled by lack of, of uh, microchips, the British Navy was shackled by the lack of pulley blocks to make their ships uh, sail. And uh, he set up in Portsmouth a, a, a factory and uh, turned out these pulley blocks to the uh, naval specifications so that they were able to build and sail more ships than uh, Napoleon. Uh, and uh, that was why, why when the Brit British became uh, masters of the sea. Thank you. Fascinating stuff. Did you say you have a model of the SS Great Britain? Did you do no, it? No, no. I, I have this picture of the model. Uh, I, I do. I think I do have a picture of the SS Great Britain, but it's only about this long. <laughs> right. Okay, next up is Julia. Go ahead. First of all, thank you, Seamus, for recommending it. It's a wonderful series. I will have to dig into it a bit more. I was fascinated the way Brunel saw innovations and put them onto his ship um, and tested them out. And particularly the propeller, for instance, I have no background in the development of the propeller until today. And the fact that it won't work with three um, even in the triangle that looks balanced and that didn't work. So I don't know the physics even of what was involved and why they developed six um, and whether the similar, they said the same shape of propeller is used now. Is that correct? And has there been any innovation since then? Thank you. Um, I do know that there are props that have only three blades, so I don't know the engineering either, but perhaps Gord or George do. Gord, you were next. Okay, I, uh, I want to respond. I mean, there's an, an infinite variety of propellers from two blade to as many as you want virtually, um, but um, just a bit of information I came across uh, to the uh, the uh, block works that um, the senior Brunel developed. I don't know where I've read it, but um, I believe that that has been renovated into a museum in the UK somewhere. I don't I don't know where. Okay. Uh, thanks. Uh, next up is George. Go ahead. Okay, it's about propellers this time. Um, I think that probably the uh, idea for the propellers uh, stems from windmills, uh, and windmills have a number of vanes, or at least they did back then. Um, and uh, over time, uh, the, the ability to push water uh, using something that's uh, uh, rotating has evolved greatly. And most of the ships, most of the propellers that are on the uh, uh, water today are three, four uh, blades, sometimes two, as you say. Um, but uh, they didn't know anything about <laughs> propellers and that was their first attempt. The, the problem with the three bladed one was that it didn't have enough surface left when they took the other three off to yeah. actually push the boat 
very well. It, it was a balanced propeller and it was uh, probably a, a very good solution to get home, uh, but uh, it, it didn't do the job. Um, I would point out that the Great Eastern, which was uh, twice as long and four times the uh, tonnage or greater than uh, the, the uh, Great Britain was a paddle wheeler. Uh, so uh, Brunel went back to paddle wheels. Um, the uh, Great Eastern wasn't such a success, but it uh, turned out uh, that it was the only ship large enough to carry enough cable to lay the transatlantic cable. And that's how we got the, the transatlantic cable so early in, uh, in the uh, 1860s, I guess, 1870s, um, when no other ship would have been uh, capable of carrying that much cable and laying it on the Atlantic floor. Fascinating. Thank you, George. Jim? According to my uh, handy source from Google, the origin <laughs> of a boat propeller was in 1827. Oh, it just went off here. Uh, Czech Austrian inventor Joseph Russell, R E S S E L, had invented a screw propeller which had multiple blades fastened around the conical base. He tested his propeller in February 1826 on a small ship that was manually driven. He was successful in using his bronze scoop propeller. Well, wait a minute, it just disappeared on me. He was successful in using his bronze screw propeller on an adapted steamboat in 1827. So this uh, precedes Brunel's uh, application. So 1827. Thanks, Jim. You're welcome. Anybody, any other comments? Uh, or uh, please raise your virtual hands before we turn it back to Diane. It looks like Alan doesn't have the facility to raise a virtual hand. So let's go with you, Alan. Can you mute, unmute yourself and uh, and then afterwards, Elspeth? Alan, can you unmute yourself, please? There, I've unmuted you, Alan. Okay, thank you. Uh, I was interested in the, the comments on the Great Eastern. Uh, I thought perhaps uh, the Great Eastern uh, came before the uh, Great uh, Britain, but uh, uh, my, uh, uh, my uh, great grandfather, uh, before he came to Canada uh, as, a, as a naval architect, uh, was in charge of the dry dock for the Great Eastern after it had laid the uh, transatlantic cable. And, and that was in uh, Milford Haven. Fascinating. Thank you, Alan. Thank you very much. And Elspeth. Okay, I really have nothing to say about the program because I'd watched it before, but what I do want to say is I want to thank Diane and Graham for all your hard work for all this since October. If it wasn't for you, we would not be here every Wednesday having fun. So, well done. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Elspeth. And thank you everybody for your support during the year. It does make a difference. Uh, Marie, I see you have your hand up now. Unmute yourself, Marie. I was just clapping. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you for your hard work. 
<laughs> Thank you very much for all of you. I wanted to ask Ron Jenkins just to talk a little bit about the link that you put up on the chat. Um, can you tell us what that link is for? Um, the first one, I guess it is. Yes, the first one is um, a link about the uh, US or the SS United States, which I'm not sure is the ship that um, was in question. The SS United States was a, a, a passenger liner in the mid 20th century. Um, and then the second, um, the second link, I, I noted that it's about Jeff Bezos's uh, new ship being too large to get to the ocean because it has to clear a bridge um, that the Dutch don't want to dismantle for his convenience, even though he's maybe ready to pay for it. Uh, Yes, I we have definitely heard about that in the news. It yeah. will be interesting to see just exactly what happens there. Um, Julia. Okay. Um, my father used this is change of change of topic a little. My father used to whittle wooden two propellers that you put on a stick, but out of wood. Does anybody whittle wood here? Who was that yep from? I don't see who said that. I know Charles used to whittle. Um, I wish I'd kept them. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Okay, folks, um, we are coming to the end of our, our session here. Um, and I did want to remind you that on June the 1st, we have our spring excursion, which is a sale on the Playfair with lunch following at the RCYC. Currently, I have a full roster for the sale and I have um, a full roster for the lunch. I've got a couple of people joining us. We have a maximum of 18 on the uh, sale and 20 for the lunch. So um, I thank all of you who have registered. If you wish to be put on a waiting list, please let me know because um, we always have, or we are likely to have cancellations towards the time of the sale. And I would not like not to go out without a full roster. Um, Elspeth, did you have something you wanted to say before I finish off here? Sunny Yacht Club, Diane, not RCYC. I'm sorry, you. Uh, we missed part of that. It's, it's, it's RCYC. Hamilton Yacht Club. Not the Royal the Hamilton. But did I say RCYC? I'm sorry. You're right. <laughs> it's the Royal Hamilton. <laughs> Not RCYC. Was that what you put your hand up for, Ron? Uh, no, I wanted to uh, second Elspeth's uh, support and, and congratulations and thanks for um, skippering, Diane. Uh, wonderful job. Thank you and, very uh, much. Really and, appreciate your thoughts. Oh, and, and one other little detail. It was about propeller development. Um, the newest ships now have... Um, things called azipods for their propellers. Um, I mean, if I can share the screen, I can show you a picture which might save some explanation. Um, well, just a moment. Okay. Should be able to go ahead and share. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I might make sure yeah. you. So these are these are azipods, um, not installed yet on the ship. But th there's a propeller, as you would recognize. But the propeller is actually driven by a large electric motor, and it's fastened up to the uh, hull of the ship, and that whole thing can rotate. Oh, depending so, on. so there is no uh, no rudder any longer with this sort of thing. 
these can um, these can serve as bow thrusters or stern thrusters or standard propellers and they're not pushing water past a blade uh, a rudder blade so they're much more efficient um, and it looks as if the blades themselves have a uh, a variegation on them, and that would mean that water would flow by them in a different kind of way? Um, they're actually machined to very fine tolerances. What you're probably seeing are machining marks. Um, but when you look on some of the uh, videos about construction of ships, um, they do very careful uh, propeller designs now because the propellers turn fast enough that if the water is not flowing perfectly, um, they can get a lot of cavitation on the blades, and that can fatigue the metal very quickly. So, um, so the design of propeller blades for for large ships now is a very precise science. Another kind of engineering path that somebody could take. Um, Seamus. Wait a minute, Seamus, you're muted. Oops. Can you hear me? Yep. I apologize. I didn't know there was a sign up for lunch. I just thought it was a trip all in one. So there's two lists, right? No, um, my assumption is that if you sign up for the sale, you're signing up for the lunch. And if you aren't doing that, then you need to let me know. Oh, no, thank you. Thank you for the clarification. I, okay. I will be there. Thank you. George. Just a point about uh, the Ozip, what do you say, Ozipods? Um, you can get them on your uh, small cruisers now. Uh, Volvo Penta have it for uh, your 30 foot uh, power boat, but uh, the, uh, it is fascinating. On the Canarders, Queen Mary II, you uh, pull into the harbor the boat stops and then moves perfectly sideways without tugs uh, into her berth, uh, wow. using her bow thrusters and uh, the rotated uh, stern propellers. Right, right. You know, I've been on a cruise ship or several cruise ships, and I, I bet that the last one I was on, they did that, and I didn't notice. Um, but now, I would, for sure. Julia. Thank you, Ron, for that. Is that why the ship can turn on its pivot completely in a small space of water? Ron? Good question. Yes, those, um, those designs now, I mean, they're technologically advanced because you have to put a, a large electric propeller in. Um, and have the the generation for that propeller on board with you know conventional engines but they're highly maneuverable and they're also used for uh, for tugboats and so on that can spin on a dime and push forwards and back in all directions and in, in fact what you have is uh, uh, flying by mouse uh, because uh, all you have to do is say where you want to be and the computers will uh, tell the propellers what's the most efficient way to get there. Wow. Okay. Okay. Wow. I'd like to turn it back to Diane. So uh, to wrap it up. Okay. Um, by the way, somebody who said something about computer chips and availability of them right now, I have had a personal firsthand experience in that I was supposed to have a computer delivered uh, yesterday, Monday, or today, and they have delayed delivery. And when I spoke with the uh, when I spoke with the Apple, they said, "Oh, well, it's because of they can't they don't have the delivery of the actual machine here in the country. It has to come from overseas, and they deliver them as they are built." So there you are, firsthand experience. For those of you who signed up for the June ex uh, excursion, I am going to be sending out a confirmation of who's on the list and uh, the waiting list. 
so that you know exactly that you have been confirmed. If you have, uh, I, as I say, I only have one person on the, the waiting list and the rest of you who have signed up, your name is already there, but I will send that out in the next day or two. I have asked Melody Schaffer to join us on October the 12th, our first day back. I'm not sure whether she will or not. She is in the middle of the Atlantic right now, so has not responded to me. Um, we are looking forward to a number of good presentations, including Cork uh, and the Cork, um, ex not excursions, the uh, regattas that are held in Kingston and Larry Rennie and Phil Dawson are going to do behind the scenes on a cruise ship. Um, Larry worked on one for a long time, so that will be exciting. And then I have a few others I have still to contact, but that will be happening. Um, and we are also going to be looking at the blend of in-face, uh, in-person, and Zoom. Um, we still haven't uh, gotten that down, nailed it down, and who knows with what's happening with COVID, whether that is going to be possible. We definitely will have Zoom in the fall. So with that, I ask all of you to have a wonderful summer and enjoy. Um, we'll hope we don't have too many Zoom thing, I mean, uh, COVID things over the summer. And with that, pipes out everybody. There will be rooms afterwards, so join us if you will.